Good evening, dear Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. So there's this trick that facilitators usually use whenever they're given a training. They come around and say, my class is going to be very, very interactive. And I become very, very scared. <laughs> so this evening, I'm going to use that trick and say, my class is also going to be very interactive this evening. <laughs> so I'm going to put you guys on your toes. For those people that like calling me whenever there's a table topic session, Today is the day for revenge. <laughs> and for the people that don't like smiling whenever we're giving speeches, today is also the day to grab you and show you. Thank you very much. Before we forge ahead, what is table topics? Anyone? In one to two sentences, make it very short, brief. For our guests, what is table topic session? Let me go with Joseph Masalaidi. Very briefly. Okay. Good evening, once again. Good evening. So, your question is what is table topic? Yeah. So, I will say, according to the Toastmaster, table topic is finding your way behind that letter and speak in front of the audience in a way of your kind manner. Thank you very much for that brilliant response. Let me take somebody to Master Hapsat. Just give it a try. Anything. articulate and concise response to inspire him and also show him that it is possible to reach that level of Elon Musk. That own hub is not lost. So it doesn't have to be with the truth masses. You can find yourself in any given situation and you are expected to pass your thoughts across logically. And passing those thoughts across can open a lot of doors for you. And that is why within Toastmasters, we try as much as possible to hone that critical life skill. Because you don't know where you're going to find yourself in. It doesn't have to be about contest, but it is something very critical and worth putting all your energy into to perfect it. So let's go into the meat of the matter. How do we answer a table topic session? within the context of Toastmasters and outside. First and foremost, you may ask a question. For example, tell us the most important day of your life. The best technique for you to allow yourself to gather your thoughts is to listen attentively to that question. If you listen critically and analyze that question, naturally, your brain will flood you with a lot of thoughts that will make a lot of sense. But if you jump into answering that question without listening critically to that question, there's a tendency that you have a break of thoughts and 
in effect you won't answer the question very well so it is very critical for you to listen attentively and deploy your listening skills that we hone in Toastmasters International. So that's number one. Number two, when you are asked a question, take a deep pause and reflect. You don't need to dive into answering that question. There's something that bosses do that is almost magical. And it also adds drama to the occasion. So if you ask me a question now, the answer might not just drop, but if I take a pause of five to seven seconds, naturally, whether I like it or not, a thought will pop out of my head. And once it popped out, you just swing into action and answer the questions in a smooth and seamless manner. And also while answering the question, if you make the audience laugh, for example, chip in a humor or two, don't be eager to respond to the question. Allow the audience to suck in that moment before you continue with your train of thoughts. So pauses are very key in allowing us to answer table topics in a concise manner. Thirdly, whenever you ask a question, deploy this trick. Ask the facilitator, can you repeat the question? Or you yourself repeat the question. It allows you to also gather your thoughts. You give your brain a woman piece of thought to flow with the line of thoughts. So this is also very critical. Next. <laughs> and after repeating the question, this is where you get into the meat of the matter. This is where you reel out your facts, your statistics, your stories, your analogies, everything happens right here. So this is the main thrust of every table topics answering session. So here you have your body, your opening, and your completion right here. This is where you wow the audience. Then finally, you end your session with a summary of what you discussed with the audience. And here you also give a very punchy call to action to end that table topic session. So give them that takeaway message that when they leave the hall of this venue, it keeps reminiscing at the back of their minds. So this is very, very critical. Ensure you wrap up your thoughts by telling us the most critical aspect of that answer and give a call to action. That's all right. So that's something we incorporate in public speaking skills that is called SHARP. Does anybody use the acronym? Just master Ian. I don't. Really? That's surprising. I did hear money. Interesting. So SHARP. The S stands for story. So try and infuse a story, no matter how short, to enhance and buttress your response. The next H stands for humor. We all love humor, and during Toastmaster Timothy's session, we were all grabbed and infused with that presentation because of the humor that was dosed inside his speech. The next is analogy. This is also another literary device that is very important. For example, I can infuse something like, life is full of tricks. And it's like a roller coaster. So something along that line. Distinguishing between two different 
opinions to merge it into one. The next is rhetorical question. So I can come up here and say, have you ever wondered why our leaders are reluctant to inspire their followers? Something along that line. The audience don't need to respond to the question, but it sets the mind racing. Something like that. Well, finally, pictorial. So pictorial could be, I can demonstrate with my wristwatch, or my cap, or my phone, or something, just to showcase the point I'm trying to address. Next. So here we're going to discuss the strategies of answering table topics session. So we have three. The first one is express an opinion. So for example, I ask this question, what is more important, degrees and certifications or soft skills, right? So the first point I will respond to after being asked that question is, soft skills definitely. In the past 10 to 20 years, the world has shifted from placing emphasis on degrees and certifications to soft skills. For example, have you ever seen Aliko Dambote or Elon Musk add the title doctor or professor to their name? Something like that. So that's my first point. Then you add another point to cement that particular statement that I made. So I'll say for example, a recent study conducted by LinkedIn claimed that 92% of professionals value soft skills more than hard skills. Something like that. I'm giving you a statistics that is backed up by data. Right? So that's for explaining the express an opinion point. And of course, you're going to sum everything up at the end of the presentation as a summary. I also give a call to action. Then the next one is prep. Point, reason, example, and point. I'd love someone to ask me a question, but I don't know if somebody will ask me a hard question, so I don't want to put myself on the spot. <laughs> Who do I trust? I don't trust my trust president. <laughs> I don't trust my president. Who do I trust? Somebody that will give me something very easy. Just my celebrity is my very good friend, and I'm sure he's not going to put me on the spot. So ask me a question. Okay, so your question on the topics. Yeah, something very easy. <laughs> so the question goes. No, I'm not. I'm not giving a full table. We are going to do it in components. So just ask a question. Then break it down into the four different points. What are you not rich like the monks? The question is: sunset and sunrise. Which one do you prefer, and why? Sunset and sunrise. Which one do you prefer, and why? Thank you very much. Sunset and sunrise, which one do I prefer? So the number one point, I prefer sunset. I prefer sunset because I am not a morning person, right? So that's my first point. Do you understand? Yes. So that's the first point. Then we're now moving to reason, right? The reason for that particular response. So I'll say, I'm not somebody that usually functions very well during the morning hours. I usually take about three to four hours to really boot my system to forge into the activities of the day. And by sunset, 
I must have energized myself to the optimum level of my performance. So that's a reason, right? Then example, I'm giving you an example. A couple of years ago, I was offered a month working opportunity to venture into a very lucrative business deal. But I lost that particular deal because my business partner called me around 6 a.m. in the morning and I couldn't pick up that phone call because I was deep asleep. So that particular terrible experience has opened my eyes to the need for me to also become a morning person. So that's an example. Do you get? So then finally, you summarize the point and say, although I am not a morning person, I've realized that people that are very engaged during the morning sessions are more successful in life. And that has prompted me to get out of that my comfort zone to pursue my life dreams and ambitions. So if I continue being a morning person, I might lose out on a lot of opportunities in life. So that's like a summary. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So finally, discuss the timeline of events for every single question you are asked. So I ask myself this question. What is the most cherished moment of my childhood, right? So I'll start with the past. The most cherished moment of my life, of my childhood, was during those sessions where our entire extended family would go on summer holidays in our village in far away Jamaari and engage in sporting activities, bonding activities, and activities that would cement our bond as a family. So that's the past, right? So you come to the present. The present is currently, we've not been able to gather our entire extended family due to the ever dynamic change of the world affairs. So currently, we've lost that tradition as a family. So that's the present moment. Then the future is, due to the unfortunate broken bonds we've established in our families currently, Efforts have been made to revive that particular bonding activity that held the family tightly in the past two decades. So currently, the entire family have realized that there's a need to go back to that interesting strategy of bringing the entire family under one roof to engage in activities in order to cement the ties of the family. So that's a future event, right? So that's for that. So we now come to the judges' ballot because we are all going into a table topics contest session. So it is important for us to be aware of what the judges will look out for. The first is the content, which takes. 55 marks. So in this context, there's speech development. Your table topics response must have an opening, something punchy, humor, story, a statistic or something. Then also the body. You must have a chronological line of body. Then also an ending, like a call to action, a takeaway message, or anything, and or is the speech organized in a logical manner, and how smooth 
was your transition. That would take 30 marks, maximum of 30 marks. The effectiveness will take 25 marks. 25 marks. Was it logical? Was the response direct? Or did you beat around the bush? Did it die in? Was there enthusiasm in your response? Did you achieve the purpose of your response? And how was the audience reception? Were they hooked? Were they captivated? Were they laughing? All this comes into play. Now we move to the next one, delivery. And the first component there is the physical. How did you appear? Were you dressed for the occasion properly? Did you use body language? Or were you just sitting on one particular place, not moving from one place to the other? Then the speaking area. Did you move from point A to point B? of this lecture. Then the next one is your voice, your voice level. Were you mon monotonous throughout the speech or did your voice raise to a particular level and also come down to a particular level to buttress and enhance your points? Were you too fast? Were you being heard by the people at the back end of the hall? So all this comes into play and you take 15% maximum marks. Then we move to the language, appropriateness to speech and audience. So did you use beautiful words to pass across your thoughts? Were they reasonable? Were they succinct enough for the audience? Then finally, correctness, grammar, pronunciation, were all masterful English grammar students. So on this, I'm sure everybody will get 5%. <laughs> okay. So finally, whatever you do, exude that confidence. Take charge of the moment. Once you're up here, showcase your talents. You've been Toastmasters for one, two, three years. So be confident. It's your story and your perspective. So our answers can never be the same. So be confident in yourself. Also be brief. You don't need to belabor the audience with too much information. Take one or two information and stick to that particular response. And finally, also be sincere. If you are not too comfortable with the question asked, navigate your way around it in what suits you. You don't need to tell us something that you've never experienced. So find a way of narrowing that particular response to something you are very comfortable with. So at this moment, we are going to take a practical session of what we've learned, and we're going to use the CRC method of evaluation. So if we, anybody comes up here, we're going to take three things that stood out for us, right? So if I come up here and you ask me a question, what is the one thing I did that was very commendable? You write that down. So what is the one thing that I need to improve upon. So all of us should jot one or two things of the responses that we're going to receive this evening. Do we have volunteers or should I put people on the spot? Mm -hmm. Put on spot. Hmm? Put on spot. Okay, let's, let's do it this way. We're going to give three seconds. I'm going to ask a question. I'll answer the question and we'll go around. And whoever misses out on the question will come up here and answer the question. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. A yes or a yes? Yes. Okay. So, names of Toastmasters Club. Burial Toastmasters. <laughs> Good evening, Toastmasters and guests. 